Hello. My name is Humphrey Solomon Jr. Welcome to my channel. Our today's video presentation is about real life applications of conic sections. Before we continue, please visit my channel for more math lessons and tutorials. Thank you. Modeling the real world, a problem involving circles. Dolores is building a circular fountain, and a concrete walkway around it. The landscape architect gave her a drawing of the design, as shown in the figure below, with distances measured in feet. Letter A. Use the equations given to determine the radius of each circle. Letter B. Determine the total area of the fountain and the concrete walkway combined. Including the plants. Letter C. Determine the area of the walkway. Letter D. Determine the circumference of the outer edge of the walkway. In solving letter A, we will use the equation for the inner circle. This will give us a radius of the inner circle equal to 4 feet. And, if we will use the equation for the outer circle, this will give us a radius of the outer circle equal to 6 feet. In solving letter B, we will use the equation for the area of a circle. This will give us an area of 36 pi square feet for the area of the fountain and the concrete walkway combined. In solving letter C, we need to subtract the area of the inner circle from the area of the outer circle. This will give us the area of the walkway equal to 20 pi square feet. In solving letter D, we will use the equation for the circumference of a circle. This will give us the circumference equal to 12 pi feet. Let's have another example. An arched doorway is formed by placing a circular arc on top of a rectangle, see figure below. If the doorway is 8 feet wide, and the height of the arc above its ends is 2 feet, what is the radius of the circle containing the arc? In solving this problem, we can use the x and y axes, and put the center of the circle at the origin. And then, we can use the coordinates of the circular arc, in the standard form of equation of a circle, to find the radius. Using the equation, x squared plus y squared, equals r squared, we will substitute 4 for x and r minus 2 for y, and then we solve for r. This will give us, 16 plus r squared, minus 4r, plus 4, equals r squared. Simplifying, this will give us the radius equal to 5 feet. Let's have another example. The cross section of a rivet, has a top that is an arc of a circle, see figures below. If the ends of the arc are 24 millimeters apart and the top is 8 millimeters above the ends, what is the radius of the circle containing the arc? In solving this problem, we can use the x and y axes, and put the center of the circle at the origin. And then, we can use the coordinates of the circular arc, in the standard form of equation of a circle, to find the radius. Using the equation, x squared plus y squared, equals r squared, we will substitute 12 for x and r minus 8 for y, and then we solve for r. This will give us, 144 plus r squared, minus 16 r, plus 64, equals r squared. Simplifying, this will give us the radius equal to 13 millimeters. Let's now discuss a real world problem involving a parabola. A mirror shaped like a paraboloid of revolution, and will be used to concentrate the rays of the sun at its focus, creating a heat source. See figure below. If the mirror is 40 inches across at its opening and is 12 inches deep, where will the heat source be concentrated? If we will lay this out using the X and Y axes, we will have a point at 2012, and we need to look for the focus. We need to use the standard form of equation for a parabola that opens upward. Since the vertex is at the origin, the h and k will be zero. Then, we will now substitute the coordinates 2012 in our equation, 20 for x and 12 for y, and then solve for a. 
This will give us the location of the focus from the vertex, or the base of the reflector. The heat is concentrated, 8.3 inches from the base of the reflector. Let's have another example. The towers of a suspension bridge are 1200 feet apart, and the height is 600 feet above the road. The cable between the towers has the shape of a parabola, and the lowest part of the cable is 200 feet high from the sides of the road midway between the towers. What is the height of the cable 100 feet from a tower? We will again use the X and Y axes, and place the vertex at the origin. It was given that the distance between the towers is 1200 feet, so the coordinates of the top for one of the towers is 600 400. We can use this to find the height of the cable 100 feet from the tower. We need to use the standard form of equation for a parabola that opens upward. Since the vertex is at the origin, the h and k will be zero. Then, we will now substitute the coordinate 600 400 in our equation, 600 for x and 400 for y, and then solve for a. After we solve for a, we will use the equation of the parabola one more time, this time we will use 500 for x, 225 for a, and then solve for y. This will give us the height of the cable 100 feet from the tower, approximately 277.8 feet. Let's now discuss a real world problem involving an ellipse. An arch in the shape of the upper half of an ellipse, was used to support a bridge, that is to span a river 32 meters wide. The center of the arch is 9 meters above the center of the river, see the figure below. Find the height of the arch, at 10 meters from the center. To solve this, we will put the center of the ellipse at the origin. And then, solve for the height of the arc at 10 meters from the center. Since the river is 32 meters wide, we know that the A will be 16 meters, and the height of the bridge is 9 meters, so B will be 9 meters. We will use these values in the standard form of equation of ellipse, with the horizontal major axis, and then solve for Y. Simplifying, this will give us, Y equals 7.026 meters. Our answer will be, the height is approximately 7.026 meters, at 10 meters from the center. Let's now discuss a real world problem involving a hyperbola. A vertical cross section of a cooling tower is a portion of a hyperbola, as shown in the following diagram. The horizontal cross sections of the tower are circles. Letter A. Find the radius of the top and the base of the tower. Letter B. What is the smallest radius of a horizontal cross section? To solve letter A, the radius of the top of the tower, we will put the center of the hyperbola at 0 220. And then, we need to solve for the x coordinate indicated at the top of the tower. If we will substitute the x and the y in the given equation, and solve for x, this will give us, x equals to approximately 107 feet. To solve letter A, the radius of the base of the tower, we need to solve for the x coordinate indicated at the base of the tower. If we will substitute the x and the y in the given equation, and solve for x, this will give us, x equals to approximately 126 feet. To solve letter B, the smallest radius of the horizontal cross section of the tower, we need to solve for the x coordinate indicated at one of the vertices of the hyperbola of the tower. If we will substitute the x and the y in the given equation, and solve for x, this will give us, x equals to 80 feet. I hope I was able to help you apply the concepts of the conic sections in real world problems. Always remember, as much as possible, put the center or vertex of the conic at the origin, this will lessen the number of variables in solving. This video. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Also, click the bell icon to get notified when I upload my next videos. Please share this video with your friends. Have a nice day.